the, the basic news is that uh, all Tesla vehicles exiting the factory have the hardware necessary for level five autonomy. Uh, so that, in terms of the, the, the cameras and compute power, uh, it's um, it, every car we make, so on, on the order of 2,000 cars a week, uh, are shipping now with uh, level five, meaning hardware capable of, of full self-driving or driverless uh, capability. Um, so it, it'll take us uh, some time, uh, you know, into the future to, to complete validation of the software uh, and, uh, and and obviously get the required regulatory approval. But the important thing is that the foundation um, is laid for the cars to be fully autonomous uh, at a safety level we believe to be at, at least twice that of a person, maybe may better. Um, so uh, I think that's probably unexpected by most that it's happening right now. Um, so yeah, we're, so we're pretty excited about that. And that that's also essentially part two of the Model 3 announcement, which is that Model 3 um, will also have the hardware necessary for full autonomy. Uh, in fact, all, all cars that Tesla makes from here on out will have, um, have the hardware needed to be fully autonomous or, or driverless. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's where things are. And, and the, uh, this is all Tesla Vision uh, software. So uh, we, we, we're, not, uh, we're not using uh, any, any third-party software or uh, anything for, for the uh, vision processing. This is a Tesla-developed uh, neural net. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, although it's somewhat hard, hardware independent, um, it could be, we, we could actually run this on um, uh, NVIDIA, AMD, or, or Intel. Uh, we, we, did, we did pick in the NVIDIA uh, Titan uh, GPU as the, as the main um, chip for the, the neural net. Um, but it, it, was, it was a pretty tight, tight uh, call between, particularly between AMD and uh, NVIDIA. Uh, but ultimately we thought NVIDIA had the, the, the better uh, Better hardware, um, so that, that's kind of where that, 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 that's I think pretty pretty huge news. Um, now with that, uh, we can go into questions. Okay, our first question is from Nikki Gordon Bloomfield from Transport Evolved LLC. Your microphone is now open. <clears throat> yeah, good evening, Elon. Um, I have got a I've got two questions. I don't know if you're in the place to answer to so. Please pick one if, if not. Um, Autopilot's proven very reliable thus far with you know, minimal in it problems with, uh, with its safety. But I'm asking if Tesla will be offering indemnity against crashes involving fully autonomous autopilot mode in much the same way as Volvo is promising to do when level five autonomy is activated on your vehicle. No, I think that would be up to the individual's insurance. I mean, just like it's you know, um, if it's if it's if it's something endemic to our design, certainly we would take uh, responsibility for that. Um, but uh, you know, I think once you view sort of autonomous cars, much like like an elevator in a building, um, does does Otis take responsibility for all elevators around the world? No, they don't. Um, uh, so uh, you know, it's um, what what really matters at the end of the day here is what is the absolute safety. Uh, level. Um, I mean, one of, the things, uh, one of the things I should mention that, frankly, has been um, quite quite disturbing to me is the degree of media coverage of autopilot uh, crashes, which are basically almost none, uh, relative to the paucity of media coverage of the 1.2 million people that die every year in manual crashes, is something that I think uh, does not reflect well upon the media. It really doesn't. Um, because, and, and, and really, you need to think carefully about this, because if in writing some article that's negative, you effectively dissuade people from using an autonomous vehicle, you're killing people. Next question. Our next question comes from Jack Stewart from Wired. Your line is now open. Hey, good evening. Uh, I was wondering, Elon, if you could just spell out how you see this rollout of autonomous features 
happening once these cars start to become enabled. Um, the press release says that new features will become available bit by bit. How do you see that? Are, are we going to see full city driving straight away or a more limited feature set? Yeah, so since this is a, a new platform, um, although we've been spending, you know, we've spent um, more than a year um, in, in testing, the, uh, the, the the, the, the feature set initially will be will, not, will be disabled at least for the first few months. The uh, the, the hardware to, the cars with hardware two, what we call hardware two, um, which, which is sort of the full autonomy suite, will actually have fewer features than cars with hardware one. Um, so we expect to to reach feature parity uh, following um, uh, field validation. Of the of hardware to probably in December, so maybe two or three months from now. Um, so for the next two or three months, actually, a hardware one car will be better than a hardware two car. Uh, and then um, every approximately every two or three months thereafter is when we expect to er, release uh, significant improvements in uh, autonomous capability. Um, uh, and our I. Our goal is, and I feel pretty good about this goal, is that um, we'll be able to do a, demonstra a demonstration drive of full autonomy all the way from LA to New York. So basically from uh, a home in LA to, let's say, dropping you off in, in Times Square in New York and ha having the car go and park itself uh, by the end of next year without, without, without the need for a single um, touch including the charger. Um, what is happening to autopilot in the in the vehicles with the new hardware? Could you speak specifically to that? Uh, what is happening to autopilot in the vehicles with the new hardware? Um, well, the, uh, the, the, the the new hardware is, is what will enable self-driving, which is different from autopilot. Um, you know, autopilot is a term that's been in use for more than half a century um, as as an, as an assistant, uh, a flying assistant in, in aircraft for pilots. Um, that's why we chose to use it. Um, it does not represent self-driving uh, any more than autopilot and aircraft makes an aircraft self-flying. So I'm just trying to understand, so the autopilot, which has been associated with your advanced assistant, driver assistance technology here you know, up until now, is, are, is that, what, what happens to that system? What happens to that 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 name, if you will, as you go forward with this new hardware. It's just not clear from the release, and um, I just want to understand how you're handling that. Yeah, there's um, it, basically that the, there'll be two. Uh, I mean, we're, we're, there'll, there'll be two options for uh, buying a, our car. Um, what, one is what we call it enhanced autopilot, uh, which is kind of Quite similar to what the the autopilot that we that we had been offering, except that it's got redundant forward cameras, um, and it has uh, a, a left rear camera and a right rear camera, um, as well as uh, a significantly improved um, ultrasonic sonar and uh, and 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 much more computing power. Um, the, the net effect of enhanced autopilot is you should be able to go from freeway on ramp to exit, as well as transitioning. To, between multiple freeways um, and passing and maneuvering around other cars without touching anything with enhanced autopilot. Um, th then there's uh, sort of the full self-driving capability, uh, which will take care of the much more complex uh, situations uh, in in urban uh, environments. Um, and so there'll be two two options that people can can, can pick in, in buying the car um, either. It's basically a, an, an improved version of autopilot or um, full self-driving. So one, one's kind of four cameras, the other's eight cameras. Um, yeah, that's, that's sort of what, what will happen. Now, now, the hardware one autopilot vehicles will continue to improve um, with improved software with, with, as the fleet learning, as we accumulate more miles, um, it, will, it will continue to, to get better and better. Um, with it, but but it, it, will, it is limited by the, the fundamental hardware that's on on the uh, the hardware one cars uh, in that there's only one Ford camera uh, they're, they're ultrasonics but they have half the range and resolution 
um, has the, has the, the radar. Um, and so there's, with, within the context of, of that sensor suite, uh, the hardware one cost will, will continue, can continue to, to get better over time. Thank you. Our next question is from David Baker from the San Francisco Chronicle. Your line is now open. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for doing the call. I actually wanted to follow up on exactly what you were talking there. Could you walk us through um, the, the differences between the hardware suite on the existing autopilot cars that are out there and this new suite? In other words, you, know, you were talking about more cameras, uh, better sensor range. Could you just detail each of those changes? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we go from from one camera um, to eight cameras, uh, and and th three of which are forward cameras. Uh, so we have redundant redundancy in uh, the forward camera uh, is sort of looking looking forward, um, and we have 360 degree coverage uh, visual coverage around the car. Um, so that's uh, that's a pretty that's a pretty big upgrade. The uh, the compute power increases by a factor of 40, like so, 40x increase uh, in compute power. So it's a gigantic increase in, in computing power. Uh, it, it, in fact, the computer will be capable of, uh, of, of 12 trillion operations per second. So it's basically a supercomputer in a car. Um, and then the ultrasonic sensors are next generation uh, ultrasonic sonar. Uh, which have about twice the range and resolution of the of the current um, sonar, and that that's also 360 degrees. And the, the, I mean, there's also some other minor things like the that the the GPS uh, is is more accurate um, and provides more frequent updates, um, and there's some other minor sensor improvements um, on the IMU, the initial measurement unit, and a few other areas. Um, hey, Elon, I'm just wondering, what are your thoughts on the regulations around this? You know, is it going to be uh, limited based on, you know, oh, in Texas you can do this and in California you can do that and it's going to be different or are you just going to say everyone everywhere can do it? What, what are you thinking on the regulatory side? Well, it's not up to us. It's up to the regulators. Um, I, I'm, I'm, hopefully um, in, in the U.S. things do not become balkanized so that it's different in every state because I think that would be that would be detrimental to the U.S. consumer. Um, and I think in the EU, there's, it's like uh, for the confident it'll be um, a uniform standard. Um, so it's really a question of um, what uh, you know. What, what does the public think is appropriate? What do regulators think is appropriate? Um, and gathering enough uh, data uh, because the system will always be operating in shadow mode. So we can we can uh, gather um, a, l a large volume of statistical data. To show um, the false positives and false negatives, when when you know when would the computer have acted, um, and would that have prevented an accident, um, or if the computer would have acted and that would have produced an accident, we can then but that's operating in shadow mode, so we can send, say when it would it have incorrectly acted or not acted, um, compare that to what it, what should have been done in the real world, um, and. Uh, and then at the point at which it is a statistically significant result that shows um, uh, like a, a very a material improvement over the the accident rate for manually driven cars, I think at that point regulators are likely to be comfortable uh, approving it. Uh, but but that approval process really could be radically different from one um, part of the world to, to another. It's, it's not something within our control. One last just follow up to that is. Will you know? You, you talk about rolling out new features every two to three months. Will the regulatory environment in the U.S. or the EU or wherever hold you back from rolling out those improvements, or will you roll them out and then you know ask forgiveness instead of permission if you think that it's that it's safer? Well, I mean, we've always rolled out our um, you know, our autonomous functionality um, within the the, re the regulatory framework of any given country. Uh, so uh, this is not a you know pleading forgiveness or permission. It's it's we, we you know we work um, you know, we, we look we look carefully at the regulations um, and make sure that uh, what, what we do is in line with those. Um, yeah, I mean, we can't do anything other than that because it would 
be against the law. Hi, Elon. Uh, thanks for taking this. Um, I'm wondering, um, does is there now that you're moving on to hardware two and you're going to keep working with hardware one, is there a point at which you can that you'll reach a maximum of potential for hardware one, and then you need to, you know, an owner will need to upgrade to the next to a newer car to get the full uh, self-driving capability you can offer. And it's self-driving will definitely need hardware too, which is what we're currently we're shipping as of this week. Um, it's it just because you 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 don't you know you just can't do this with one camera. You need eight cameras uh, to be self-driving. Uh, you also need a lot more computing power to run the the the, the vision basically the, the vision AI. Um, so so up, upgrading hardware on cars is not it's not realistic. Uh, it would it would be like give, giving the car a spinal cord transplant, um, <laughs> and wise. So, no, you know, even if possible, best to be avoided. Um, but I, I should say that you know, people that have hardware one cars uh, should um, like bear in mind that, the, that their car will actually have more functionality than a hardware two car, at least until December or maybe later. Um, and it, you know, it's probably sometime next year before the. Hardware two functionality starts to exceed hardware, hardware one, um, and uh, th th there's also a higher a higher cost for the uh, the autonomous functionality. So it's not you know there's there's a higher price to pay. Like for 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 the, for the full self driving to activate the full self driving hardware suite is it's eight thousand dollars. So um, that's uh, you know, as compared to the hardware one autopilot, which is three thousand dollars. So this is a you know, meaningful price difference, um, and uh, the, the car, well, the hardware one, actually has more functionality, at least, you know, at least for the next uh, several months. Mm. Um, I wish there was some other way to do it. Uh, this, this is not, you know, it, it's just I don't know how to go into old cars and install another seven cameras, <laughs> this is, and and a new wiring harness. Um, so there's there's no, it's just. I wish we could do it some other way, but there's, there isn't some other uh, there isn't, so. Hi, um, I was wondering if uh, you plan on you know, making this a kit that other other car makers could use. I, I, I think this is very hard to turn into a kit um, uh, because it requires a tight integration of, of software, sensors, and, and computing power. Um, as, as well as the ability to do large scale over there updates. Um, it's, it's not just some kit that you can add, add onto a car. I, I mean, one, one thing that we've also done with, with, with our system is that if you, and we'll be releasing some videos hopefully later tonight and tomorrow morning demonstrating the cars, the car in operation, but you actually can't, it, unless you look closely, you can't even tell that um, a car is hardware one or hardware two. Because because we've been so careful about um, each of the cameras being uh, part of the, the the frame of the car, such that like nothing sticking out, uh, nothing does, like this in no way makes the car ugly. Um, so there are no weird protuberances. Um, it's it's all incredibly subtle. It's put a lot of effort into not affecting the beauty of the car. The car is as beautiful with hardware two as it is with hardware one. Um, and I, there's just no way to turn that into a kit and put it in some other car. It's not not not, not realistic. Um, yeah. I was interested in your your thoughts. Uh, if you could expand your thoughts a little bit about um, the safety issue, um, how statistics aren't collected on how safe a car is, only how dangerous it is. So how do you communicate the idea that uh, your semi-autonomous uh, uh, cars are, in fact, safer? It's, it's not that difficult. I mean, you simply say, um, you know, how many miles have been driven and, and you know, and then how many deaths, uh, serious injuries, meaning like an unrecoverable injury um, or, or, or minor accidents were there, um, and obviously there, there are many more uh, sort of minor accidents, um, you know, and 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 and, uh, and and serious accidents than there are fatalities. 
Um, so that provides a much richer statistical uh, sample set for uh, comparing the relative um, safety of uh, autonomy versus not autonomy. Um, and, and we see consistently uh, significantly better uh, results with autonomy than, than without. Um, and, um, and that just gets better over time as the, as the system is, is further refined. Hi, Elon. Uh, I have a quick question about uh, inclement weather and how has hardware 2 improved over hardware 1? Well, it, inclement weather, you mean does it work in snow and stuff like that? Or what do you mean by inclement weather? Sorry. Uh, anytime, say, you know, there's a potential, uh, potential for condensation or pre precipitation on the cameras uh, tends to be a problem. Um, uh, how have you dealt with that? Oh, yeah. So th there, are, there are heater elements um, around on, on all of the camera surfaces. So it can, you know, just, uh, it's actually, we have that on hardware one as well. Uh, so just automatically uh, heats it up to prevent snow and ice. Uh, and then the positioning of the cameras uh, is in a location uh, where there's very unlikely to be uh, dust or ice accumulation. Um, so the, the the triple cameras or all three Ford cameras are uh, basically in, in front of the rear view mirror um, and in the wipe zone of the of the the, the, the car. Um, and then the uh, the, the the sideways looking cameras are in the, the B pillar. They're sort of high up in the B pillar. Um, this is, that's the sort of pillar in between the front and rear passengers. Um, and then there's the, 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 the rear, the, there's two, there's left rear and a right rear camera. And th those are nested in the side repeaters. Um, and so that they're out of the flow of, of, of rain and, and, and snow and whatnot. Uh, and then the rear camera is uh, on, on the lift gate, just above the license plate, but but sort of tucked under. So you you actually have to look carefully to see any of the cameras, but they're all in places where it's quite difficult for dirt or, dirt or ice or snow to accumulate. If if if, there, if one of them is blocked, the system can actually tell that it has some opacity reduction um, and can alert uh, the occupants of the car to to, to just to, to clean off the camera. Hi, uh, you mentioned that this is related to the Model 3 and the Part 2 unveiling, and I just kind of wanted to focus a little bit on more of that and how it really applies to Model 3, and is is this all going to come standard on Model 3? Um, will there be a way to upgrade like there is now from, from what is included as far as the software uh, standard and what's paid? Yeah, the, the, the full autonomy hardware suite will be standard on, on all all vehicles that Tesla makes from here on out. Um, you know, we'll continue to make uh, improvements, and, uh, and and those improvements will affect the probability of, of, of an accident. Um, but I, we, we feel pretty confident that the current hardware suite um, will be at least twice as good as the the uh, as people on average. Um, now, in the long term, we want to try to get to um, a ten a ten x improvement. Um, and so that will require ongoing refinement of, of the hardware. Um, but still, I think it, something like a 2x improvement would, would be pretty incredible. I mean, if that was applied across the board to cars, to, to all vehicles in the world, you'd go from 1.2 million deaths to 600,000 deaths. That would be a lot of lives saved, and not to mention all the, you know, the serious injuries and, and other things that, that, that happen that aren't in the fatality statistics. So. Um, so I think there's, there's still a lot of merit in trying to go from twi twice as safe to ten times as safe. Um, but, but I should be clear that every car Tesla produces from now on, here on out uh, will have the full autonomy hardware uh, capability, including Model 3. Uh, hey, Elon. I One of the, the questions that, that kind of um, keeps coming to mind here is how do you know how, what kind of testing are you doing to be confident at each stage that um, that the system is safe or is functioning enough uh, to be confident to put it in there? Because it's you know it's it's difficult to to come up with. I mean, maybe it's not difficult. What what, what sort of testing are you doing to to ensure that these systems are working well? 
Yeah, it's it's, it's actually it's not it's not all, all, all that difficult. I mean, we we start off obviously with um, with with t testing with uh, Tesla, you know, with our Tesla um, uh, QA team. So we're, we're testing initially on a closed track with with our with, with our test engineers. Then we, then then we'll broaden it to uh, a very limited set of um, of a, a kind of alpha alpha users, including me. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I usually have the, the 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 latest software update about a day after our QA team has it. Um, and um, and I'm, I'm I'm personally testing testing every element of the car. Um, the, the then it goes to uh, a what we call our early access program, which is about a thousand customers distributed around the world um, who are technically savvy and um, don't, don't mind, um, you know, or, or, or want to uh, use um, sort of the, the early software and are cognizant, cognizant of, of, of potential issues. Um, but you know, because there's, there's so many different environments throughout Earth that it's just not possible for a QA team to to cover them all. Uh, if that's looking good, uh, then we will uh, uh, roll it out uh, initially in shadow mode to the the, the whole fleet. Um, by shadow mode, it means that the car is not actually taking any action, uh, but it is registering when it would take an action and and when it would not take an action. Um, and then you can compare that to cases where, let's say that somebody has an accident, but you, but you can look at the, the vehicle logs and say, well, if the if the car had been in autonomous mode, that accident would have been avoided. Then okay, that's that's obviously uh, you know plus. And um, you can also say, okay, look, the the car would the the car computer would have uh, done something that would, would have resulted in an accident. In that case, is in shadow mode. Then, then obviously that's that's an issue that needs to be corrected, and then you in, in statistics, I mean these are called false positives and false negatives. Uh, you, you you gather enough of those over time until there's clearly a statistically significant sample set, uh, and at the point at which um, it's unequivocal that uh, turning on an, an an autonomy feature would improve safety, that is the point at which we we allow it to Act, to actually take action. Before that, we do not allow the computer to take action. Hi, thanks for making time. Just a couple of clarifications on some things. Are, are, you, are you talking about the new hardware two being level four or level five? And um, just to be clear on hardware one, um, is there going to be any disabling of that technology at this point or does it continue to run as is? Thank you. Um, it's, it, it will be. The hardware two is, is capable of level five autonomy. In other words, it's capable. The hardware is capable of the highest level of autonomy. Uh, and, and and level and and hardware one, um, I think will we'll continue to improve. Um, you know, as as we improve the the, the software that operates the car. Um, I mean, already with 7.0, it was unequivocally safer than um, than. Um, you know, that then the manually driven cars, uh, and with ADO that has improved even more. Uh, so uh, it, it would obviously be crazy to turn off something that is preventing accidents. Uh, hey, Elon, just quickly, uh, the 40X supercomputer you described, is it um, separate from, does it have to be separate from all other vehicle uh, system technology? Uh, at this point, or is it integrated with other vehicle technologies? Uh, no, it, it's a good question. It, it is isolated from the rest of the vehicle. So uh, the, the kind of infotainment, sort of entertainment in, instrument panel, the center cluster, uh, anything to do with entertainment, the so web browsing, uh, is isolated from the uh, vehicle control computer. Okay, great. That's all. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely don't want to be bright. <laughs> Have the car crashes as a result of going to the wrong web website. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, everyone, for attending the Tesla press conference.